Hi, it's Tim from OracleBase.com. In this video, we'll demonstrate the auto rest feature of Oracle REST Data Services. This allows us to easily generate RESTful web services for existing database tables and views. We're going to create a new user for this test called Test User 2 and grant it the Create Session and Create Table privileges. We then connect to that user and create the EMP table. We then populate that with the usual data and we're ready to start. First we have to enable ORDS for this schema. We do that using the Enable Schema procedure in the ORDS package. We set Enabled True, tell it the schema, which is Test User 2, and set a base path of HR which will be used in the URL instead of the Test User 2 name. I'll refer to this as a schema alias as we move forward. We can now auto rest enable the EMP table. We do this with the enable object procedure in the ORDS package. We set enable to true. We tell it which schema object we're interested in auto enabling. We set the object type as table and then we give it an alias that will be used in the URL. So this will be the object alias similar to the schema alias we saw before. And that's it. We're done. We've auto rest enabled the AMP table. Let's take a look at using the RESTful web services it's generated for us. We'll start off by looking at the metadata catalog. Notice we have the base URL to our ORDS installation. Then we have HR, which is our schema alias. And then we have metadata catalog, which says we want to look at the metadata catalog. If I send that to the server, it returns a JSON document that contains all the information about the objects that are ORDS enabled in this schema. At the moment, we just have the EMP table and we have the links to relevant information for that EMP table. Notice all these links contain the schema alias and the employee's object alias. We can also look at the Open API catalog. So this is similar, but it has Open API annotation. So this time, schema alias, Open API catalog, and employees. Let's just change the format to JSON. And now what we can see, this entry, Swagger 2.0, we're using the Open API 2.0 annotations. And we have a description of that object and the operations available against it. The nice thing about this is we can paste this into the Swagger editor and allow us to generate code for different languages to access this service. Now let's actually use the API for the employees table. So we have a get request against HR employees. When we send that we get a JSON document returned with an entry for each row in the table with all of the relevant data and a direct link to that object. If I were to add the primary key value, the EMPNO, onto the URI, then I can get directly to the employee in question. So here we see the employee information for 7521, as well as links relevant to that employee. Let's add a new employee. So we have a HTTP post. We have the base URL, which is HR employees. Have a header of content type application JSON and a raw payload for a body that has key value pairs representing all of the column values that I'm interested in inserting. When I send that, I get a 201 created response. I'm also presented with the data that's in the new row. That can be useful if you've got generated values like identity columns. And I have the links relevant to this row. We can amend an existing row using the HTTP put operation. This time we're specifying the base URI plus 9999, which is the employee number. Once again, I have the header, content type, application, JSON, 
and this time I have a body that represents the new data I want so I've changed the employee name from Hall to Wood. If I send that we get a 200 OK message and then a JSON document as output and here we can see the data representing the row and the links to that row. To remove an existing object we use the HTTP delete. Here we've got the base URI of employees and we add this little query string on the end to limit the employees down to an individual. So we're saying just give me the employee that's 9999 and because we're sending a delete operation it's going to actually delete that row. We send that, we get a 200 OK message and then we get a response that contains a JSON document with the number of rows that were deleted and we can see one row has been deleted. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.